Harry D. Moore and Diane Nash. A documentary by Pranav Mahesh and Denise Serretta. Harry D. Moore was born on November 18, 1905 in Houston, Florida, a tiny farming community in Suwanee County in the Florida Panhandle. His parents were Johnny and Rosa Moore, and he was the only child. His father tended the water tanks for the Seaboard Airline Railroad and ran a small store. When Harry was nine years old, his father died to health issues. His mother tried to manage alone with working in fields and stores. However, in the next year, she sent him to Jacksonville, Florida to live with his three aunts, Jesse, Adriana, and Macy Tyson. Jacksonville had a large African-American community with a proud tradition of independence and intellectual achievement. Moore's aunts were well-educated and treated Harry as their own son. Under their guidance, Moore's natural inquisitiveness and love of learning were reinforced. After living in Jacksonville for three years, Moore returned to his home in Suwanee County in 1919. He enrolled in the high school program of Florida Memorial College, getting straight A's in most of his classes. Most of his classmates named him Doc. In 1925, he graduated from college and began a teaching job in Cocoa, Florida. There he met Harriet Vida Sims, who he soon married. In March 1928, their eldest daughter, Annie, was born. On September 30, 1930, their baby daughter, Juanita, was born. In 1934, Harry Moore started the Brevard County NAACP. In 1937, with the help of the Florida State Teachers Association and backed by the NAACP attorney Thurgood Marshall in New York, Moore filed the first lawsuit in the Deep South to equalize black and white teacher salaries. Although the case lost, it spawned many other lawsuits which led to the equalization of salaries. In 1941, he organized the Florida State Conference of the NAACP and became the secretary. In 1943, he moved on to an even more dangerous arena, lynchings and police brutality. In 1944, after Thurgood Marshall won an important case, Harry Moore immediately organized the Progressive Voters League, and in the next six years, due primarily to his leadership, over 116,000 black voters were registered in the Florida Democratic Party. On Christmas of 1951, Moore himself was killed when a bomb was placed beneath the floor under his bed. Moore died on the way to the hospital, and his wife Harriet died nine days later. Despite a large investigation, this case has never been solved. Moore and his wife have been the only NAACP couple to give their lives to the movement. It is Black History Month, and today in Brevard County, a bit of history behind one of the great civil rights leaders was on display. A book containing the first voter registration of Harry and Harriet Moore was found in a warehouse. West News' Dan Billo looked into where that history is now headed. This record book is a re an important reminder of the sacrifice of two brave Americans. On the yellowing pages of a book that goes back to 1884, the signatures of Harry T. Moore and Harriet V. Moore stand out clearly. And it's a, a historic event, um, very significant. It really kind of was divine intervention of opening the book and found that page and found them there. The Moores first registered to vote in this book, part of a set of old records that also show whether people paid a poll tax, what their race was, and what their jobs were. Harry Moore in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s risked his life registering more than 100,000 African American voters. If Moore's life as a civil rights activist began with the signing of that book, it ended right here when the Ku Klux Klan set off a bomb under his home 17 years later. In a way, the signature in that book led to what happened here. One man was heard to say in the explosion's aftermath, that's one black man who will keep his mouth shut from now on. But Moore's words still ring out from the very walls of the Mims Museum where the old book will now be displayed, reminding us how he helped bring change.
Diane Judith Nash was born on May 15, 1938, in Chicago, Illinois. She grew up in a middle-class Catholic family. Her father, Leon Nash, held a clerical job in the military during World War II, and her mother, Dorothy Boughton Nash, worked as a key puncher operator. After divorcing Leon, Dorothy married John Baker, a waiter on the railroad dining cars owned by the Pullman Company. Nash, who attended public and Catholic schools, considered becoming a nun while growing up. She also won several beauty contests as a teenager. In 1956, Nash graduated from Hyde Park High School in Chicago. After first enrolling at Washington, D.C.'s Howard University, Nash transferred to Nashville's Fisk University in 1959 and was taken back by the extreme racial segregation she saw in Tennessee. In 1960, she was designated as a student sit and movements chairperson in Nashville, Tennessee. On February 6, 1961, she participated in a sit-in at a lunch counter in Rock Hill, South Carolina, with Ruby Dara Smith, Charles Sherrod, and Charles Jones. They were arrested with the men sentenced to hard labor. After being arrested, the group engaged in jail no bail tactics arguing that paying bail would validate their arrest and indicate acceptance of an immoral and corrupt system. Their convictions were overturned in 2015, 54 years later. In 1961, Nash coordinated the Nashville student movement ride from Birmingham, Alabama to Jackson, Mississippi after learning of the bus burning to the Alabama city of Anniston and the riot in Birmingham. Nash married fellow activist James Bevel in 1961. The couple had two children, Sherry and Douglas. Nash and her husband received the SCLS Rosa Parks Award from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in 1965 for their contributions to civil rights. The couple divorced in 1968. Nash was named a recipient recipient of the Distinguished American Award from the John F. Kennedy Library and Foundation in 2003, the LBJ Award of Leadership and Civil Rights from the Lyndon Baines John Library and Museum in 2004. Nash lives and works in her hometown of Chicago. She continues to peacefully advocate for fair housing, women rights, and social justice. My job as chairperson was to go from one store to the next where there were sit-ins. And as I walked from one sit-in to another, there were these, there were mm, maybe five or six young white guys with the leather jackets who were exactly the kind who would attack us. One of them said to his friend, that's Diane Nash. She's the one to get. And I became just overcome with fear. And so for the next few minutes, I realized that my mind was on my own fear instead of on what I was doing, preventing me from being effective. So I decided to give myself a time limit. And I said, at the end of that time period, I'm talking to myself now, <laughs> At the end of that time period, I will either have gotten myself together enough so that I can do my job well, or I'm going to go back to the church, which was our headquarters, and resign. And so, at the end of that time, I was able to get it together, and I was able to function. for the NAACP. Yeah, and who are you? I'm Diane Nash. I'm a huge fan of what you did to equalize black and white salaries. Thanks. Here, you want to take a seat and discuss? Yeah, I have a few questions. Sure. Mr. Moore, I just wanted to know how did you get so inspired to do such a great thing? Well, I had a big, well-educated African-American community, and I had smart aunts who inspired me to do well in school. You're pretty young, so make sure you become well-educated, too. Thank you. I plan to attend Howard University in like four years from now, but I'm really interested in the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. That's great. I attended Florida Memorial College. Although my lawsuit lost, it spawned many other lawsuits that eventually led 
to the equalization of black and white teacher salaries. I'm currently also investigating lunches. Make sure you make a difference for the better of your community, no matter what the cost. I must be on my way now, but thank you for talking to me. Thank you for taking your time. Talking. Bye, mister. Bye. So make sure you do well in school as well. Thank you. Hey, I know you. You're the organizer for the NAACP. Oh, you are? I'm Diane Nash. Where are you? I'm Harry Moore. Wait, I know who you are. <laughs> oh, hey, I know who you are. You're the organizer of the Florida and I can't do this. So anything you'd like to discuss about? Thank you, I attend and I'm back going your pot. Thank you, I plan to attend the University of Howard. <laughs> I can't. Oh my God. Make sure you make a difference. Yeah, well, I've been thinking about applying to Howard University, but I'm only 12, so. <laughs> no matter what the cost is. Thank I... you for talking to me. Wait, were you still talking? Yeah. Oh. Mister. 